Yeah, so welcome. Yeah, hello. I can see your messages. Hi. So today we are just having a chit chat about safeguarding and to also introduce you to some of the um, materials that GMT has made available to enhance advocacy against female genital mutilation. So welcome. Send a reminder to your friends, to your colleagues, share the links with them to join in so, um, so that um, we're not being selfish with this knowledge. So thank you very much once again for joining in. So GMC is an international organization that is uh, focused on funding grassroots activists across um, eight countries in Africa. So what we do is to ensure that um, the campaign against female genital mutilation keeps going on and it is actually championed by young activists. So you see that common person carrying out um, the campaign in their various community. What GMC does is to go look for them, support them, fund them to carry out their projects. We have a very flexible funding scheme that allows um, all the activists working to end female genital mutilation feel heard and feel supported. So that's basically what GMC does. And um, I am very happy that GMC has given me the platform to grow and also to fund my work and support my projects. Hi, Winnie, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Please invite your friends and colleagues, ask them to join because we're about to go down. Okay, so um, today we'll be discussing the safeguarding media class. Someone may be asking, what is the safeguarding media class about? Now we know that different countries have lots of cases of insecurity and um, somehow activists are very, very vulnerable when it comes to um, insecurity. So um, while we go about our day-to-day -day jobs using the media, going to communities, we all have lots of experiences. So um, GMC has decided to make these materials available and that's what we'll be discussing today. So um, later during the webinar, we'll be discussing how to navigate these courses from our website. So you have, um, we have uh, media classes on how to work with GMC. We have lots of courses and the beautiful thing is that you can also get certified. So while you um, explore the courses on the website, you can actually have your um, certificate. So it's very easy. You go through the classes, you answer the questions, and then you get your certificate. And another interesting thing is that while you go through the classes, you do your test and get your certificates, if you're not so impressed about your, um, your results, you have the opportunity to try 10 times so you have 10 free trials before you get your certification. I mean, how beautiful, how amazing. So that and more we'll be discussing um, during this webinar. So um, protection is very important. Safety measure is very important regardless of what we do. But especially as advocates, we need to um, 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 be very, very careful. So I've been working to end FGM for over going to 10 years now. I'm a survivor of female genital mutilation and I've been working hard to ensure that other girls in my community do not go through what I went through. That is basically um, um, the message or the, the, the um, that was behind my passion and my own relenting efforts to make sure that FGM ends. And aside the fact that I want to tell my story, GMC gives the support and the opportunity for people like me to tell their story. So if you're a survivor of female genital mutilation and um, you are not, um, you don't know how to tell your story or you don't know how to speak up, feel free to reach out to me or feel free to follow us on all our social media handles, GMC and FGM. We're on Twitter. I know Twitter has been banned in Nigeria, but some of you are using VPN. So feel free to follow us on Twitter feel free to follow us on Instagram at GMC and FGM. So you can always send a DM. You can also visit our website, www.globalmediacampaign.org. So all the necessary information are there. So today I am not alone. I'm with a colleague, a fellow crusader of gender equality and also a campaigner against female genital mutilation. Her name is Antonia Henry Folami Daniel. Hi, Antonia, are you there? Yes, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Ah, ah, good to see you. <laughs> Same here. You know, well, sorry, sorry, I, I should have mentioned barista. Barista. Uh. And Thank you. That's Thank you so much. Law. I should have said the law. The law. Thank <laughs> you so much. 
Yeah. Um, to those who are just meeting you for the first time, can you please introduce yourself, Antonia, and the work you do concerning FGM, and, you know, just everything. Tell us who you are. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Antonia Irifolami Daniel. I'm a legal practitioner and I developed interest in FGM 2016 when I was invited for the GMC media training in Ibado. And really, I, I got so passionate about it because it was at that point I found out that it was actually done to me, although it, was, it has never been my line. I do child protection, but female genital mutilation was never part of it. So it was later after the training, I got home and I found out I'm actually a survivor also. So that ignited my interest in female genital mutilation. And since then, I've been working on campaign to end female genital mutilation. I do so many programs and thanks to GNC, they've always been there to support our programs. And when the, the, the fund is not available, we do the little we can do. But, and I can really say um, female genital mutilation move in choir state has really been impressive, especially when we got a violation against persistent and prohibition acts passed into law. And we just got it gazetted last week. So, I will tell you that from this moment, it can be used to prosecute our cases. But more importantly, our campaign is still on and people are really, really getting interested in ending female genital mutilation. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Antonia. Your introduction was power packed. Thank you very much. I mean, now I'm, I'm very happy that your, your response is actually leading us to our conversation today. So you have um, a legal knowledge as your background, and then also you have the VAP Act domesticated in your state, right? Yes. Um, or you, female genital mutilation is now being criminalized in Quara State. So um, from this legal as aspect, what do you have to say about um, insecurity? You may want to use um, Quara State as a point of contact when it comes to insecurity. And um, what does the law in your state say about insecurity? Well, um, unfortunately in Nigeria, um, the past few years has been, has been summer when it comes to insecurity issues. I remembered when I started um, the CSO work, although not on female genital mutilation, insecurity was not a problem for me in choir state as I can go to any community to talk about child protection. But our last few years, because of the situation we found ourselves in Nigeria, has been somehow, and we're still really, really working on it, and we're hoping. Well, choir state is one of the states that they have very little insecurity issues. But the last few months, I will tell you that um, the towns, our border town, already experiencing these insecurity issues. We have laws in place in Choir State to, to fight against not insecurity directly. <laughs> to fight. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, I'm actually in the office, so it's 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 not been too too quiet here. Yeah, yes, so I said that we don't have the exact law in Choir State that says if that, that that deals with insecurity as an offense, but all the laws we have on ground, like the issue of kidnapping, it's somehow enshrined in our laws. So that is what we're using, and our security agencies are also up and doing. And one of the things I try to encourage our campaigners now is no matter how safe you think the community is, before you go into that community, make sure you're going with security personnel. Although that does not give you 100% assurance that you will not be faced with insecurity issues. But the fact that they are even going with you gives you um, confidence. And I also tell them, I, like, like me personally, I don't just wake up and decide I want to go to this community to carry out an activity. I will have made my background check to know how the community is faring concerning security issues. And even after making my background check, one of the things I make sure I do is, I go to the, to the community before my activity. I try to meet the community gatekeepers. Now, the way they also welcome you in the community determines if anything happens, if you are certain, they're going to make you safe. 
I've been in a community with a colleague, not on female genital mutilation, but one of our community projects. And we're actually going there to, to dig a borehole for them. And on entering the community, we were tagged because they thought we were government officials. So I was not telling my colleague, I said, I asked you that, have you made your baseline survey before they were going? They said, yes. I said, baseline survey is not book baseline survey. What I mean by that is you should have gone to the community, meet with the community heads, tell them the set that is coming. So they will know, number one, it's not government officials coming. And they will know what you're coming to do. Not that you're going to the community and you want to talk about a particular topic. And the community will even go against it. I remember my first campaign of female genital mutilation after the training in the Bado. The community I got into, the moment I said, I, the campaign was in Yoruba. So the moment I made mention of female genital mutilation in Yoruba, it was rejection for me. Because they all said, ah, no, 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 we don't want to hear about it. And I found out that it was because I have not really made myself available before the program. So when we're talking about insecurity in our communities, it's not really the insurgents. At times, it might even be the community we're going into that will turn up against us. So I think that's what we really need to, to address first. How do we access communities and get the communities to be on the side before we even with it? Even if the insurgents are coming, you find out that they will even make you safe in their own capacity. But most importantly, moving with security agencies in the Nigeria we are today is very, very key. Wow, thank you very much, um, Antonia. Like I'm learning a lot. I was just lost listening to you. Thank you very much. So yes, it's You're very welcome. important that um, activists do not just go into communities like they are the saviors. It is important that you do community mapping and do community entry. You need to build good relationship. You need to have allies within the community you're going into. And another thing you said that I really like is the idea of preparation. You don't go into a community on the day of your activity. You need to go there, meet, uh, meet the necessary people you need to speak with, and then go there later. You don't just go with your team and then just badge into a community. Because one thing I've discovered is um, people are very, very we have people that are passionate about ending FGM, but they don't have the necessary skills and information. And I think that is why GMC is putting all of this in place. Personally, when I started um, campaigning against FGM, I just wanted to do it because I, I was a survivor and I just wanted to create change. I was not happy that my state had the highest prevalence in the whole of Nigeria. So I was really working, but I was not um, trained. I, I, I did not really know about the ethics, you know, the things I needed to do. So it was more passion, raw fire, raw passion burning, and that was not enough. So um, thank you very much. I That's why GMC is actually putting all of these materials and information in place. So if you're joining me for the first time, I would like you to take all of our courses, all the materials available because you don't know where it can help you. Nigeria has a high case of insecurity. Thank you very much, Antonia, for also stating that it may not have to be the insurgency. There are communities in Nigeria where female, talking about female genital mutilation is still a taboo. So it takes lots of wisdom, lots of preparedness to actually penetrate those communities. And then especially when you're now dealing with children. And that's why this course does not just talk about safeguarding tips for yourself, but also for you and then also those you work with and also if you are working with children because child protection is very important. So um, I think we'll just show you an intro to the course right now. Um, I'll get back to you, Antonia. So Jeremiah, kindly show us um, the, the, the video, the first phase of the safeguarding media, um, safeguarding media class. All right, I, um, Alice would be um, sharing uh, from our end. Okay, thank you very much. That's me. Hi, welcome to the Safeguarding Guidelines Media class. My name is Ayobelo from Nigeria. I am a survivor of female genital mutilation and I've been a campaigner for over six years now. I work with GNC as a AAA activist and I'll be sharing with you our top 10 safeguarding tips to help protect you and those you work with.
Okay, thank you very much. That's just an intro. I mean, I would have loved that we showed the entire video, but I think you have to go to the website if you want to see all of those information. So it's go, it's really an eye opener, you know, to make you understand the things you need to do. And um, thanks for that juicy introduction, Jeremiah. I really like it. So please, as soon as we are done with this webinar, hurry to our, our, our website. Um, www.globalmediacampaign to end um, um, female genital mutilation. So you would see it there. And um, we're supposed to have Mr. Shola Fagorosi, but there was a new development and then um, he had to um, um, go, but hopefully he will join us if he can, because it would have been interesting to have Mr. Shola because um, he firsthand experienced some cases of insecurity and it would have been good for him to share his story you know, so we can learn from it. And um, I remember the last, there was a webinar we had in April thereabout, and he was supposed to be a guest and then he experienced the case of insecurity. And we have not really uh, been able to talk about it because he's been healing. So, and then um, when I reached out to him and he said, of course, I want to talk about it. I was very, very excited, but um, let's be hopeful that he joins us and, um, but let's move ahead. So Antonia, back to you, are you there? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you very much for doing this with me. Thank you very much. So um, when it comes to um, child protection in Nigeria, do you think um, child protection is being recognized? And do you think there are um, some laws put in place when dealing with children? I mean, we know that we talk about human rights, we talk about women's rights, but do you think people really pay attention to child protection. I mean, there was a statistic that was saying, uh, I saw on social media, I can't really quote it word for word, but in fact, it was making us understand that one in three children in Nigeria are actually depressed. Imagine one in three, you know, that's just like the psychological implication, but I'm just trying to talk about the security cases for children right now, because you work with girls. I saw the activity you have International Day of the Girl Child, you have young girls. And sometimes after we go into these communities to teach girls how they can stand up for themselves against FGM, sometimes we have them calling. For instance, my organization, Initiative for Girls' Rights and Health Development, we have a, a, a line that people call in for social support, for counseling. And then we have young girls calling to report lots of cases. So what is it like, um, 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 what is it like at your end when it comes to children? Well, um, like I usually say, Kwara State um, as a state is a peculiar state. I use the word peculiar because one of the things I found out in Kwara State is we people of Kwara State tend to, to believe in a culture that does not exist. Now, when I say mm -hmm. a culture that does not exist, they, they so much start some of this meat that happens to a culture or their religion, which I don't believe in. It's so sad that in Kwara State, the child right law was domesticated in 2006. In fact, I would say Kwara State is one of the first few states that actually domesticated child right law after the act in 2003. And up to this moment, I want to tell you, we're still really struggling, if not for some of us activists that came on board. In fact, coincidentally, I was in a training yesterday where we're having communication gap between the family courts, how to go about it. And I stepped in. But I was I was so happy yesterday because I felt, oh, my name is really ringing Bell in Kwara State. Because the moment I stepped in and I introduced myself, the judge heading the family court was like, wow, finally I'm placing a face to the name. Because one of the things I've made up my mind to do in the last two years for signing child protection is I don't care who you are. I'll make sure the law is being used. What is the essence of domestication of a law when we won't use it all because you believe the, the, the perpetrator is a family member. This is the problem we have with our girls. And that's why when these girls are having issues, I, 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 got, I got wing of this when I started a female esteem project in schools. And I noticed these girls don't want to talk. And eventually I found out that some of them have actually talked in the past, but have been kept short because the perpetrator happens to be their uncle, their father. It's so unfortunate. So one of the things I'm doing with my team presently is we need to go back out into the community and let these girls know we are there for them. And I, I must say the last two years for us here 
it has been so hectic because part of my team, I have the Lauren Indigent. It got to a point they had to tell me, there's no family house we want to report you to. I am not from Lauren, I'm not married. I'm not, I'm not even married to a choir state man. So you can't say you want to go and report me because that's, that's one thing that is common in this part. Once they see that you are ahead of the campaign, then you see your uncles, your aunties, the, your traditional ruler calling you that you should take things easy. But I've been able to incorporate some of the indigenous people that they are ready to fight it, notwithstanding. And thank God for the Federation of Women Lawyers. They've really, really been helpful also. They've really been helpful. Where it has to do with a big personality in the society, we go on social media. You know, that's one thing they don't like. You don't want, to, you don't, you don't want your name sold on social media. So if you're not doing the right thing and you don't want your name sold, I don't know how that works. So I must say my last six months in choir states pertaining to child protection has also improved, has also improved. Then also we, I, I made sure I involved myself so much on radio programs. In fact, I call on radio stations to invite me. I don't have to wait for, for, for them to invite me. When, when I go a month and I don't get the call from a particular radio station, I give the call. Are you guys not bringing me through now? So I give them a call. Are you guys not bringing me on air? You know? And they're like, okay, we are bringing you on air. I said, okay, at least I paid for, for one of my programs. So give me a free program and invite me as a guest. And really, I've been working with like four radio stations in Quara, and it's really been helping. There was a time, there was a, time a, a child was abused and brought to my office. And the moment I came in and somebody mentioned my name, the, the father of the child said, ah, are you the same barista Antonia that talks on radio? I said, yes. He said, ah. I said, what is ah? He said, ah, you won't listen to our plea. I said, I won't. So he had, he had seen how I operate on radio and I keep telling them on radio, please, it's better you don't even report. If you report to me, once we start, there's nothing like she's my daughter, I want to step I, I, I want to step back. No, we have started it. And I make them understand that once a child is identified as a child. You might give back to the child, but I tell you that the child belongs to the government first. That is the first mm -hmm. thing I tell them on radio. The child belongs to the government first, before the father and mother. So they already know when the case is with me, <laughs> it has to get to a logical conclusion. And honestly, like the Ministry of Women Affairs also from this part, they, they, they are really happy working with me because most of the things that they feel that it's not really working, they also have this bureaucracy of where Lori indigent, you know. So child protection in Quire State is also improving. The only the only problem we have in Quire State is we don't have homes for children. So even where the case is, because when we're talking about child protection, the first thing is we are meant to we are meant to relocate the child from the unsafe environment. Now in Quire State, one of the challenges I have now is. Even children that are sexually abused are put together in the orphanage with children that are being abandoned, which is not meant to be because they have different needs. But unfortunately, in Kwara State, because we don't have the home, so we, are, we still have to manage what we have on ground. But the wife of the governor inaugurated the 21-man committee on sexual and gender-based violence, and luckily I was part of the committee. So that's part of that's that's my only concern in that community. How we need to have different homes for different needs of children, and how we have to have more than one home per need, so we'd we'll be able to. All, all we do in Kwara State now is within the Lorry. Let me just put it that way. We just do few outside Lorry because I don't even have the resources to keep going out of Lorry. And Kwara State is so big that you have to travel seven hours to get to some towns still within choir states. So you wow. can imagine that, you can imagine that. So I really wish we can get the support of the government. Probably it would have been better than what we have now. Our government is not really looking at child protection angle. Our government is looking at infrastructure, road and stuff like that, not really. And I keep saying it, one of the things I say when I go on radio is, the children you don't take care of today destroys what you build today. So it's better we all bring come together to take care of the children now while we are building our roads and infrastructure so that these children will not go in future and destroy the roads and infrastructure we built. So in child protection in Paris State, we are still coming up. Let me just say it that way. We are trying, we are coming up.
Thank you very much, Antonia. That was, um, thank you very much. I really learned a lot and I'm happy that you're sharing your story. So it still boils down to the fact that as campaigners, it goes beyond raw passion to end FGM. We need to consider some factors. We need to build strong allies. You need to, uh, people need to know what you stand for. People need to know you. Relationship is actually very important as a campaigner. You need to be able to work with people work with law enforcers in your community, liars with religious leaders, liars with traditional rulers, and also liars with the media. You know, as, as much as GMC likes to fund campaigners, I love what Antonia said. If she goes there and um, if she goes a month without an invitation from the radio station, she's like, what's up? Because yeah, if you keep buying radio airtime, at least GMC funds um, activists up to like eight times a year from the direct action grants. So even if you don't get all through the eight times, at least you get like twice. And from that twice, you're able to purchase a meaningful amount of airtime to air. So, so it means you're a recognized person. And that's one of the things GMC does, amplifying our voice and making us visible in our local communities. So if you don't even have funds for um, to, to acquire more radio airtime, the previous work you've done should speak for you. The previous work you've done earlier should speak for you. People should recognize you. So you need to work traditional rulers if you feel like you don't have access to them don't worry slow and steady there's no way you can be on radio first time second time third time and your name would not ring a bell but before you have all of those exposure you need all of the materials gmc is putting in place so make sure you use the materials available for you because there are times we go through issues and we're like oh why is this happening after all i'm trying to create change i'm trying to create positive change why am i experiencing this setback why am i experiencing these attacks it is because you have not been able to make use of the materials gmc has made available for you so you go on the website and make sure you explore and devour all of these materials so um, another thing I would also like to mention about child protection is that as much as um, we have to concentrate, sorry about my light keeps popping and Nigerian factor, <laughs> Nigerian factor of electricity. So um, bear with me. So one thing I've discovered from my conversation this morning with Antonia is that um, as much as we have so many back and forth with child protection, as activists, we need to concentrate also on activist protection because we are the frontliners. We are the one writing the wrongs in the community. So we are obviously targets. We are targets, we are the vulnerable set of people. So if you want to know how we can actually um, have some sort of protection, um, you should also explore some of these causes. For me, I have been, I've received a um, couple of um, backlash from communities because Insecurity does not have to be insurgency, just like Antonia said. It could be a backlash from um, a phoning program. It could be a threat for you to stop handling a case. You know, it could be, it could be, it could be, it could be hate speech. It could be um, because I remember I even posted a video on YouTube and I was talking about people ending FGM. And the comment section, there was a particular guy that was on my case. He was just ranting, insulting me and saying we need to continue FGM. In fact, there was, a, there was another one that was saying we should campaign for male circumcision. You know, you have all of those comments. So as an advocate, you need to have thick skin when it comes to dealing with people. So because human beings are social animals and you cannot um, predict how they will react regardless of your, your intention. So you must learn the do no harm principle. Make sure you don't go into the community like you are their master and you are, you are their savior because you need to understand that People who perpetrate female genital mutilation actually do it from a point of love, and they're actually doing it from the level of their understanding. They don't want to, um, 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 they want to end promiscuity, they want to preserve the culture, they want to, you know, all of those things they want to do. So when you now tell them what you are doing is wrong, you know, it doesn't really make sense to them. So, and just like Antonia also said, she says the government owns the children first. So it is important for you to have legal knowledge of children protection in your community, have good knowledge of the laws within your community, have good relationship with the media, have good relationship with stakeholders such as traditional rulers and religious leaders. So you need to put all of those things in place. So while we go move forward, if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box. We'll be um, having questions and answers shortly. So um, I, I have some questions already, but I'm trying to um, um, look up um, 
on the chat box. So please feel free, we need your questions. Please send in your questions ASAP. So um, Antonia, I would like to ask you a question from some of the questions we've collated. What do you think about, um, I know that we've talked about physical security for um, activists, talking about how you should go to communities with security agencies, how you should be proactive and all of that. What do you think about a mental health protection for activists? What do you think? Because when you keep hearing cases and cases and cases, have you had a time where you, you've heard so many stories about somebody being mutilated and then you just feel so, um, feel affected psychologically you feel like maybe what you are doing is not enough you keep working hard but it's not being it's, it's not so visible i've really had like a mental breakdown as a result of the stories you hear every day the prevalence of sexual and gender-based violence affecting children my 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 october my october was actually a month of mental breakdown for me in fact <laughs> i was going to see a therapist I have to go as a therapist because wow. I got so, I, I got so many cases surrounding child protection generally now, not not FGM alone, surrounding child protection generally that I just noticed I wasn't sleeping for days. Because for every time I get to my office, there's always one case. Sexual abuse, physical abuse, female genital mutilation that landed in the hospital, um, child marriage. And I just noticed I was not just sleeping. And I thought it was a joke. Day one, day two, day three, I got to the hospital. Got to where my doctor had to be giving me injection to sleep. Got to the point that I was like, well, who? really? Am I going to this level? So I had to go to the general hospital to see a therapist. And of course, after interrogation, what do you do? This is this, this. So we also need mental health protection. And we are in a kind of country that most of us don't believe in mental health issues. Once we hear mental health, the first thing that comes to our mind is a mad person. Sounds fun. <laughs> yes, that's, that's the first thing that comes to our mind. Now, most of us find it difficult to oh, understand that it goes beyond that. <laughs> so as an activist, no matter how strong you are, at the point I was telling somebody that I thought I was a strong woman, mm -hmm. of course, I've always been the gri, gri person from primary school, secondary school. And I really thought I was a strong woman until this year. It was as if the more you do your campaign, the more cases. In fact, my doctor had to tell me during the therapy that you don't know why you're having more cases. It's because people are now enlightened. It's mm. not as if these cases were not there before. They're actually there before, but nobody knows what to do, so they are keeping quiet. Now you are going out to talk about it. They now know what to do. That is why you're having more cases. So in fact, she just concluded that be prepared for more cases. So you need to be strong mentally to handle these cases. So I think as activists too, we should not just look at ourselves and believe we are strong to handle these cases. We also need to check out ourselves. We need to talk out at times to, to, to a therapist. That's on my hmm. mind. Initially when I was having the migraine, I didn't count it as a big thing. I just felt it's normal migraine, it will go. The first night I didn't sleep, it will go. Second night it will go. The doctor gave me injection. I slept around 7 p.m., woke up around 6 a.m. in the morning. Me that naturally, without injection, if I sleep, my mom used to be scared. Like, I sleep. I enjoy my sleep. If I wake up 6 p.m. and I want to sleep 8 p.m., I will sleep. That is my natural pain. And I became somebody that would not sleep. But when I was telling my husband I need to see a therapist, my husband was like, the stress is too much. You need to relax. I said, no. That yes, I'm stressing myself, but at the same time, I think it's already affecting my mental health issues because I have so much overwhelming cases in front of me. And he agreed with me and we went. And when the therapist was talking, he was like, wow, wow. If he calls me a doctor at home now, that you, you already know what is wrong with you. you know, so I think we also need to check out our mental health status, not minding whether we think we are okay or not. Because the truth of the matter is, it is when we are okay that we'll be able to handle these issues perfectly. Imagine somebody that, that have been having sleepless now, not bring a case to that person. So we really need to check out our mental health issues. Thank you very much, um, Antonia. I'm very happy because um, 
it gives me a lot of confidence to know that I am not alone. You know, and I'm sure that other campaigners who are actually watching or listening understand maybe they have their own fair share of these experiences because it's not easy when they keep bringing cases to you and especially when you feel like your work is not being recognized. You know, you keep working and you feel like nobody is giving you an award, nobody is uh, talking about you so much, or um, people are just using your information in a very, very condescending manner. You understand so it can be it can be very very hard to range it. and th that this is why i have said that as activists as campaigners we need to develop thick skin and we need to work together and we need to explore all of the materials gmc is making available for us so i think one of the courses um would also be looking into now due to this discussion is actually mental security and protection for activists i think as soon as that one is launched, everybody needs to go there to deliver material because we need each other. You had access to therapists. There are some activists who do not have access to therapists. In fact, some people, once you hear, um, I'm, I'm going to the therapist, like, ha, ah, this is, it is done for you. Like, ah, you know, yeah. and then because of our culture and tradition. But these are some of the things you are beginning to unlearn. Like, okay, it is not bad if you, to see a therapy you can be a christian and see a therapy you can be a muslim and still see a therapist it doesn't mean that you are less of it doesn't mean that god has left you you understand so thank you very much for your time anthony i'm very happy and i'm very happy that um, we touched up on this topic so please if you have more questions um please send them to us i would also like to share um, my story of um, when i've also had some sort of mental breakdown as a result of cases you know um, imagine working in the state with the highest prevalence of no genital mutilation, a state where people live in denial. You know, it's a different thing when you go to the radio and then you talk and people are like, oh, wow, that's true. But you have people arguing with you. You have people trying to put their tradition. It's like you versus me. And you keep talking and then next thing they say, in fact, before I got married, what they keep saying is you're too young. What do you know about FGM? Are you even married? Do you need to have a child? But now when I talk about my experiences, talk about um, um, my delivery as a survivor. In fact, I think I'm going to actually do another video on that with GMC on the, the journey to my delivery as, a, as an FGM survivor, some of the things I actually experienced. I mean, thank God for faith. But outside faith, when we talk about medicalization and modern medicine, and according to my medical history, I actually felt the implication of FGM while I wanted to have my baby. You understand. So all of this information, you know, we just need to help each other. We just need to help each other. And we need to collaborate because it's like the forces against us is actually way heavy and more than us. So we need to work as a team. We need to collaborate. If you are getting overwhelmed with work, you can transfer cases. You can tell, you can also say no. You don't need to take all the cases available to you. Yes, you want to end FGM, but you're not Jesus. You can't change the world. So you need to attend to one case at a time, yes. And if you know that you don't have the capacity to attend to cases, you can just leave your advocacy style to awareness creation. You can just leave it to um, 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 just going on radio. You can just leave it to um, sharing posts on social media. We don't have to do everything. It's just like the body of Christ. There's the head, there's the hand, there's the, you know, you don't have to be the full body. You can just be the eyelash. You don't have to be everything and everywhere. Yes, yeah, the lashes, that's enough. So you don't have to be the heart, you don't have to be the hand, you don't have to be the head, just be the lashes and um, just enjoy yourself. So um, thank you very much, Antonia. Please, if you have questions moving, send them in. I think I would like to um, attend to questions now. Thank you for the compliments. I see, I see your compliments, I see your messages. Um, thank you very much. Okay, so um, this is from Ali, sorry, I'm tilting my head because I'm using my phone. Hi, Ayo. My name is Ali Mohamed from Kenya, specifically from Waju County, northeast of Kenya. In my country, it's attached to the in, sorry, in my country, it's attached to the biggest refugee camp in Africa. So most of the people do take their girls to the camps to go through the harmful practices. The camps are risk to work in since all sort of immigrants live there. Also, they are cross-border mutilation. Thank you very much for this information, Ali Mohamed. Yes, we have different levels of insecurity when it comes to campaigners. And that's why um, when Antonia was talking, she has said it, that it doesn't have to be kidnapping, it doesn't have to be insurgency as, 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 
as people always think. So um, this cross-border mutilation also happened in Nigeria. We have people who migrate. We have people who come in from the UK, from the US to come and mutilate girls here. And that is also to make us understand that female genital mutilation is not really as a result of um, maybe lack of knowledge or um, um, it, is, it is carried out um, maybe within those who are not educated or people in the rural communities. We have people in Lagos, people in urban centers, coming if our people now come into nigeria because um our quarters are very good yes i've had cases of people who, who came in from canada they even brought their male child too for male circumcision because they feel like oh nigerians have a way of cutting neatly they have a way of you know shaping um, um the organ so you can imagine and then it also talks about the concept of medicalization. So when it comes to female genital mutilation, there are different aspects. We just need to keep talking about it. We keep. To, we just need to keep staying informed. We just need to keep the energy burning. And so we don't lose ourselves is the reason why this safeguarding and protection media class is in place. So please, I would like you to see the brief introduction. Visit our website. I don't know, Alice, I don't know if it's possible for you to pop up our website. Is that possible? So people can uh, yeah. have an idea what it looks like. Yeah, or if you can just give us a run through, um, maybe just show us the website and what people can click on. Because this course is very, very important. Yeah, just one second, I'm putting it up. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Alice. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So when 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 we type www.globalmediacampaign.org, this is what pops up. So from here, where do we go? So from here, you go into Media Training Hub and Master Classes at the top in the menu, and then you will have to log in. You will see the different classes so far there is how to work with gmc that we launched a few weeks ago and then the one that we're launching now safeguarding yourself and others when ending fgm on the media you might have to create an account if you don't have one or you can just log in if you already have one um, so this is the introduction video that we showed earlier you can start the course complete the course as soon as you click on the thumbnail that we just saw before it will automatically enroll you i believe so you will click here and then it's pretty self-explanatory it's pretty uh, um, well done you will go through the different topics there is a small introduction you will go through the different topics um, there might be a small quiz there is a q a session if you have any questions you can feel free to answer other people's questions or ask your own um, you can also give a rating and review so um, yeah you have the course page here with the different topics that you will unlock as you go through the content. There is a Q&A section where you can ask a new question as well as answer other people's questions. There is the announcement tab. Um, if anything needs to be flagged up, this is where the updates will go. And then further resources, the grade book. But um, I will send the link right now in the chat box if anyone wants to join or enroll. And um, yeah, Jeremiah, feel free to complete. I think this is roughly the outline of the course. Yeah, I think that's really good, uh, Alice. I think um, all you need to do is hit start course and then you'll be able to see um, the video. It's going to be a course that we will we'll add content going forward. But um, yeah, you'll be able to take the quiz for the first one and then more and more will be added. But the most important thing is that you sign up you'll be receiving emails once uh, the instructor whose IO is going to add any classes or if there are any announcements for the class, 
will definitely receive. And um, as you can see on your screen now, on the browse uh, question and answer section, if you ask a question or someone asks a question, uh, you can answer. And so if you have any burning questions or any things that you need to troubleshoot, you can always look and check on that section and make sure that um, we are all on the same page. So yeah, have fun. So for every, uh, for every uh, lesson you have, it's just going to go to the next one once the rest are updated um, when they are done. But uh, you can easily uh, click complete lesson, then you'll be done with that particular one. So yeah, that's the idea really. It's really simple and I think self-explanatory. Yeah, thank you very much, Jeremiah and Alice. It's very, very beautiful. I mean, I think one culture GMC has is to make things very, very simple, easy, and flexible. I say it that all over the world, to the best of my knowledge, GMC funding scheme is the most flexible that I have ever seen. And I also want to say same when it comes to these um, courses. And thank you very much, Jeremiah, for the brilliant work you do. It's not really easy putting this together. So everyone joining us, um, this courses and media class is a new development by GMC to help us. And I think the best thing we can do is to explore all of this hard work and make sure that we gain more knowledge. So it's there, kindly um, explore it, learn, take your certificates and also give, give ratings, please. I mean, even if you don't give ratings to any other person, I am interested in the ratings. <laughs> So yeah, thank you very much. Feel free to explore. I'm happy to be doing this really. And I'm very thankful to GMC for the opportunity. The beautiful thing is that I am also an activist. I have been through the journey of learning and then from the process of learning, I'm also giving back. So that's another beauty. I just have to keep giving credit to GMC because um, it's just the right thing to do. So it's not like um, somebody who does not understand the process is the one teaching. I am an activist and I'm the one sharing my knowledge. Jeremiah is also an activist and he is also um, working day and night to make sure that other activists, um, you know, are actually growing and uh, making sure their work is actually going fine. So um, thank you very much. A big thank you to everyone that has joined in. So Antonia, before we um, call it a day, um, sadly, Shola cannot join us now. He has sent the message. Um, please, in a minute, can you please uh, leave us with your passing word? Hello, sir. I can hear you. Yeah, can you just give us um, um final words in a minute? Okay. I want to appreciate everybody for being here. And like we've been saying, we all have to come together to end this one day. It's it's not something one person can do. We really appreciate GMC for supporting us. But there are ways we can also carry on our activities when, when the support is not coming. It's not necessary we spend that amount of money. There are minor, minor things that we do that would actually be meaningful. So my parting word to us is let's all come together and keep campaigning till we end female genital mutilation in our various countries and also the issue of child protection. But in everything, we all need to be safe. It's when you are safe, you think about making another person safe. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Anthony. It is when you are safe, you can think of making someone else safe, meaning you cannot draw from, a, from an empty cup. So you need to keep filling yourself with knowledge, filling yourself with necessary information, filling yourself with all the materials GMC is making available for you before you can be charged up to help others. So I want to say a very big thank you to everyone that has joined you from Kenya, from Somalia, from London, from everywhere. Thank you very much for joining. And I recognize somebody on the attending list. Naima, we meet you. Thank you for joining. I can see Naima like on the list. <laughs> I can't wait to see you, but thank you very much for always supporting us. We miss you. We love you. Thank you very much for, for, for attending, for joining. And I also want to thank my colleague, Jeremiah and Alice for working nonstop to make this thing actually work out fine. So thank you very much. If you're joining us for the first time, this is GMC. This is what we do, supporting activists to be at the front line of ending female genital mutilation. If you want to know how to work with GMC, visit our website and um, also click on the um, um, teaching by Jeremiah on how to work with GMC. So Alice, kindly send the link you um, talked about, share it in the chat box so that people can have access. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, go to our website, 
you know, put it, let's call it a day here. Thank you very much. Bye.